Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to check your fuel pump timing on your Mark IV ALH. Now, if you just purchased the car and you don't know what has been done to it previously, the timing belt job or if the pump was altered with or any on any kinds, or if you have to do a timing belt job, you're going to have no choice but to adjust your injection pump timing. Or if you realize you have sometimes some hard starts in cold weather, uh, lots of smoke upon startups, upon morning startups, of course, uh, maybe slight low power, slight hesitation, uh, increased fuel consumption more than you should. Um, the first thing I would check is the fuel pump timing. Very important for good mileage, good power, uh, good engine health, and also good fuel economy, and also good starting, of course. Summertime is not so bad, but in the winter time, slightly off timing, you will see a difference in starting ability. Let's check it out. Now, to do this, you want to make sure your car is at normal operating temperature. My car is not exactly at normal operating temperature, but this is just for demonstrations. Now, you're going to plug in your vacuum. You're going to open up the page, and you're going to go select your control module. Now you're going to select engine, you're going to let this wait till it opens up. You're going to want to log in, which every single code is always 1, 2, 2, 3 and 3 to enable adaptations and stuff like that. You're going to click do it. Now you're going to go into measuring blocks, now there's a few other ways to do this but me I do it like this, I find it faster and easier. You're going to go up one, you're going to go down one. Right away, you're going to switch to basic settings. You're going to see on your cluster, your glow plug light flashing. Don't get scared, that's normal. Back over here, now you're going to go on to TDI timing. Now, depending on the car you have, which obviously now we're talking about an ALH, you're going to go over here, 1.9 R4, ALH, 04 to 1999, and click. That yellow line is your actual fuel pump timing. Your computer is analyzing exactly what time the injection process starts. You want to be between the red and green line. As you can see, red is the retarded section and green is the more advanced section. I personally like to have it up slightly above the blue line, which now it's completely on the blue line. I don't know if it's because my temperature is not at 90 degrees yet, but it's supposed to be a little bit higher than that. You want, I want, you want it to be on the blue line. On the blue line, obviously, is right on the money. But if you want a bit more power, maybe a bit easier starting in cold weather and a slightly, slightly bit more fuel economy, you can have it a hair over the blue line. It's not the end of the world. But you want it to be between the red and the green. That's one thing that's very important. I've seen a lot of times where the yellow line, as you're seeing, is close to the red line or under the red line or even above the green line guys the motor will run fine but that's not good that's not what you want you want it to be in between the red and green line I've actually seen cars I've actually scanned some cars where the yellow line is not even on the graph and I was so off the chart I don't know if it was too advanced or too retarded actually well when you don't see the yellow line it's completely retarded completely off the chart and when you just see a yellow line going straight up way too advanced that could actually cause engine problems in the long run now you could adjust the timing on vcds but that's the last thing you want to do scratch that out forget i even said that the only way to properly adjust the timing is going to be mechanically and i will show you in just a few seconds once you adjust the pump it's trial and error guys once you go adjust the pump under the hood you're gonna have to come back and check this timing check where your yellow line is and you want to make sure, like I said, it's between the red and the green. A slight hair over the blue is, I find, the best. Now, I'm going to go show you how to adjust this. On your fuel injection pump over here, you're going to have to remove the timing belt cover. Which is this guy over here. Three clips. Actually, there's a few other clips. There's one more clip over here. One more clip on the bottom corner over there, but they're not actually on the cover. They're on the engine itself. I never put them because they're a big pain to get to all the time. I find these three clips holding it is way more than enough. 
on the injection pump sprocket over here, you're going to have, a little bit hard to see, those three 13 millimeter bolts. Never mind the big bolt you see in the middle now. But those three 13 millimeter bolts, you're going to want to loosen them. You don't remove them. You just crack them loose. I'd say half a turn, maybe a, a hair more than half a turn. That's it, guys. Not more than that. You don't want this pulley to fall off. Then you're screwed royally. You're going to have to do a timing belt. Just loosen those three pulleys. And with a 22 millimeter open key, mechanic key, whatever you want to call it, you're going to place it onto this hub in the middle. And what's going to happen basically is the pump, the injection pump, will rotate free of this pulley over here. That's what you want. So you loosen these three. And by turning it towards the front of the car, you're advancing the timing. By turning it towards the back of the car, you're retarding the timing. Guys, let me tell you. You will, when you're adjusting this, don't adjust by wanting to see the center hub of the pump move. It is so, so, so sensitive. You guys have no idea. You're just going to apply light pressure. Just extremely light pressure onto the center hub over here. You're probably not even going to physically see this thing move. Apply light pressure, front or back, whatever you need to do. Retighten these bolts. Do not forget to tighten these bolts. Not too tight. You don't want to break them, but the way they were before. Anyways, by slightly uh, applying some pressure over here, once you're done, you're going to go see inside the car. You're going to go plug back the computer. You're going to go back into the timing, and you're going to see the timing moved. Even if you think this did not move, just by applying a short, slight amount of pressure, the timing did change. You might think by moving it a millimeter is not enough, but a millimeter sometimes, your timing is off the charts. I'm telling you guys, just a hair, especially if you're doing micro adjustments where your, your yellow line is right on the blue line and you want it to go a hair higher, believe me, just by loosening and holding the key onto that hub and just just like barely putting any force whatsoever on that key the timing moved so and that's it just a question of going back in the car plugging it back in and trial and error all right guys good luck